The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, company live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Monday morning. We got 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you got markets in positive territory right back to where we were pre-market on Friday before the fireworks to the downside. We'll see where we go on the opening bell in 24 minutes from right now. S&P's up about 35 points. That's nine tenths percent in the positive right now, trading at 39.34. You see the acceleration on Friday, let alone where we were Late Tuesday in the market, you were trading at almost 4,100, folks. That's about 300 S&P points you give up over the span of about 72 hours. End of the day Tuesday to where we were, lows of Friday afternoon. We come back to the Friday action pre-market, 39.35. We did make a bear market intraday. I think it's 38.34, something like that is the 20% mark on the S&P. We did make that point intraday, closed uh, well above that level. We're going to open above that level. But we'll see where we go on the open. Dow right now up a full percent, up 310 points at 31,523. The NASDAQ, you could say, is the laggard, up only six tenths percent. Off of the highs that we had at about 2.30 in the morning when we were above 12,000, you're trading at 11,914. We were at about 11,500 at the lows of Friday. Bitcoin catches a little bit of a bid. Now, check out the action on Bitcoin, right? You got nowhere near back to where we were at the close of action Friday on Bitcoin, you have quite a leap here to Sunday futures. You are back to that level now. But intraday Friday, the markets had a lot more up acceleration, upward acceleration than Bitcoin did. Now, you got that acceleration over the weekend to bring you back to the 30,000 mark. But be careful in that Bitcoin market. Ethereum, back to 2000, 2063 to be exact. We got gold up this morning, up $10 to 1852. We jump around to silver up 21 cents and notes and bonds right now a little bit of lower price uh but still on a contextual basis looking where we are chopping around at about 119.23 you were as low as 117.08 but just kind of building a base potentially down here now we are at a price level that you were at as far back about six weeks ago in the yield of the 10 year and we jump over to the volatility index this morning we'll kick it off vix trading at 29.16 right now there are some of your recent highs. 36.64 was the spike high we got, to be exact, on May 2nd. We were at elevated levels through the be beginning of May. Uh, Friday's action saw a high of 32.91 I have on this chart. Let's put it down to a short term. From, yeah, 32.91, and we're sitting about 29.18. All right. Let's jump around to see where we go this morning. Uh, President Biden out there remarks that China tariffs under review. Now, the headline here is that stocks rise on those Biden tariffs. I'm not so sure that's the case. As in, all you're doing is you're back to, to bring things into a technical perspective, right? I mean, all you're doing is you're coming right back to where this thing fell apart on Friday. No, nothing saying that it can't happen again. Uh, but remarks that China tariffs under review when you get into it. So you have signaled he'd reconsider China tariffs imposed by the Trump administration. I'm not so sure it's happening. We'll see. Depends on probably what happens with the market. Um, but he is in Asia, I think, with some type of, of meeting in Japan, I think, tonight. Um, traders interpreted Biden's comments that he'll discuss the U.S. tariffs on Chinese imports with Yellen when he returns from his Asia trip as a signal there could be a reversal of some Trump-imposed measures. Now, here's what I'll say. I don't think that's going to matter too much in terms of what is worrying this market so much. Yes, those tariffs would help things. And it's probably something they're looking at as inflation is out of control. Maybe that will ease some of the problems going on. Uh, but I'm going to jump to the next article I wanted to take a look at. And this had to do with uh, Joe Stiglitz. So Nobel laureate, laureate, he was on with Bloomberg this morning and he made some great points. Rate hikes killing the economy won't fix inflation because it's a supply side 
problem that needs intervention rather than interest rate hikes by the Federal Reserve. Raising inter rates, interest rates, here's the quote, is not going to solve the problem of inflation, the Columbia University professor told Lisa and Tom on Bloomberg TV at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. I think they're live from there this morning. It's not going to create more food. It's going to make it more difficult because you aren't going to be able to make the investments. I agree with a lot of what he's talking about, folks. Uh, no matter what happens with rates, a big problem going on right now is supply chain woes, China especially. Um, what you do is you have supply side interventions, he said. One of the things that Biden tried to do is to have more care for children, and that would mean more women into the labor force. That releases one of the constraints, labor supply. Uh, we used to have surpluses in food in the U.S. We can get those back, at least trying to do everything we can globally to increase the supply is going to do more in dealing with the problem than causing a depression. Killing the economy through raising interest rates is not going to solve inflation in any time frame. The market probably needs higher rates as well to some degree. But I'm not so sure that as the Fed keeps ramping it up that it's going to have the impact that people are hoping for. And that is worrisome in the market because if the Fed starts bringing it with 50 basis point hikes over and over and over and you're not getting the type of impact to tame inflation that they're looking for, what happens then? But that's part of what's going on right now, folks. Supply chain's a huge issue going on with the reason why you can't get what you want and that's causing inflation. So we'll see how it plays out. All right, jumping around with some other equities out there. VMware. So, jumping over. Come on, where am I? Broadcom is going to buy VMware. They're in talk. So, VMware, I had to get the company. I couldn't remember it. Shame on me. Broadcom. Uh, VMware spikes from 95 to 115. Broadcom, AVGO is their symbol. Uh, down a bit from 540 to 520 to be expected. Now here's, I'm going to jump to another acquisition rumor, EA. So EA goes from 130 to 134. You're up $4. What is that? 3% about this equity is up. The video game maker shares rose 2.5% after a report that the company was actively seeking a buyer or merger partner. They've held talks with Disney, Apple, Amazon, among others. Netflix might be in there too, folks. I remember saying on this program when it first kicked off, Netflix talked about getting into gaming. There have been tremendous articles written about how difficult it is to get into gaming. It is not just like a, a machine where you spend $100 million, you get a game that takes off. A much more guaranteed route may be just buying a gaming company if that's what you're looking to get into. Keep that in mind because I imagine some of these companies are going to be very attractive to say the least. Uh, GameStop is positive after they launch a digital wallet for cryptocurrencies and NFTs. I mean, that that may actually be something, folks. I know it sounds crazy, but GameStop from 95 to 97, this stock is uh, crazy to say the least. You are chopping around at kind of the lower levels that you've seen for this year. You make it down to a low of 86 bucks in January. You make it to a low of 77 back in March, and you just made it to a low couple weeks ago to $77. Last week, the low was about 89 bucks. We're going to open at about 97 But yeah, the crypto space is not going away. And if you have someone reliable that you can work with for a crypto wallet, there is potential there. All right, jumping around to some of the other articles. We'll finish it up when we get back. We're going to talk a little bit of crypto as well. We're going to talk about tether withdrawals. Be careful of those stable kings. Stable coins folks and we're going to talk about a jiff peanut butter recall out there stay tuned folks we'll be right back in a time of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the monk todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner 
Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years of experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps positive by 42, NASDAQ 100 positive by 83. All the markets continuing to drift upwards a bit. You got the Dow up 350 right now, the Russell up by a solid 20 points. Uh, jumping over, Mr. Diamond, J.P. Morgan. So they have an investor day going on today. You got J.P. Morgan up a couple bucks to 119.72. Mr. Diamond says storm clouds over the yes over the U.S. economy may dissipate. Recession is possible, but would be unlike others. Uh, raises their estimates. Okay, so getting into the actual numbers here, some big time numbers. Seeking to ease concern among investors following backlash over its plans to ramp up spending to build out offerings, bolster technology, and compete for talent, the bank on Monday maintained its expense outlook of $77 billion, excluding legal costs, <coughs> Excuse me, <coughs> an 8.6% hike from 2021. They raised the an estimate for net interest income, excluding its markets business, to more than 56% billion dollars for 2022 that would be a 26 percent increase from last year so those are the numbers that they were talking about uh the investor day is the new york bank's first since before covid uh all their senior leaders are set to speak and just one is very general here saying strong economy big storm clouds uh i'm calling it storm clouds because they're storm clouds they may dissipate Pretty simple stuff, but the numbers they're talking about. How about that? $77 billion for expenses, uh, excluding legal costs. Do you think the bank has any lawyers that are on file? I imagine so. Uh, remarkable. All right, Jif Peanut Butter. So be careful of Jif Peanut Butter, folks, because Jif Peanut Butter got me on Saturday night, man. There is a recall going on. Uh, I'm talking about it because I had some in my shelf. Wasn't aware of it Saturday night. Uh, and boy, I was in trouble yesterday being recalled for potential salmonella contamination. Uh, this is going on in 14 states now. It comes from a, a plant in Lexington, Kentucky. I guess they had 14 people in there. Two of them have been hospitalized. I'm feeling almost better today. Um, wasn't sure what it was, but I had two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches of a Jif peanut butter bar jar and 
you know, if you want to Google it, you can Google it, folks. You can figure out the lot names in it. Uh, here's a picture. If it has the 425 in there, to be exact, if you have any type of GIF, that means it came from Lexington. But look it up if you have any in there. It comes with a bunch of different of them. I couldn't believe it. You always hear these stories about recalls, right? But I knew right away. I was scrolling Instagram or something like that. I saw something about uh, GIF peanut butter recall salmonella, and I already knew that I had probably just gotten sick over maybe eating too much peanut butter on Saturday night. Maybe it was a little bit too heavy for me on Saturday night. Woke up feeling pretty sick at about 4.30 in the morning. Sunday morning, was sick all day yesterday. Finally feeling a little bit better last night. Still a little uneasy today, but feeling great for the show, thankfully. Um, but yeah, pay attention. I was not happy, not happy with the people of GIF, man. Um, and couldn't believe that when I went and checked, and I knew, I knew because I had been telling people yeah, I had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It didn't quite sit with me. I don't know. Maybe I had two of them, so it was too much. Yeah, it was too much, all right. Um, as they have 14 people being ill, so far spans 12 states. And I imagine it's going to keep going, man, because Vic got me. I'm not going to be the only one. I had it on my, uh, my shelf in the pantry, and it had been there. Probably bought the bottle only a couple weeks ago. So it's not like I had stored it there for a while. And they just issued this voluntary recall on friday so watch out for that gif peanut butter i'm not sure i'm going to be buying any gif peanut butter anytime soon pfizer says third covid vaccine shot for kids under five 80 percent effective so they may have a vaccine that's effective for kids under five uh, a third dose of the vaccine elicited a strong immune response and well tolerated by the kids with the majority of the side effects mild to moderate now i imagine vaccines are going to be scrutinized uh but we'll see how this one plays out. And this is based on 1,678 children under the age of five received a third shot with at least two months after the second dose. Um, and that was when Omicron was the main variant in circulation. And those are receiving, those kids are receiving a three microgram shot, which is one tenth the dosage level of adults. So Pfizer and the FDA have originally sought to fast track the authorization, uh, but they set that one back after the third shot they were looking for was pending. Yeah, and they delayed that application. Jumping over to Pfizer shares, PFE is their symbol. And you're trading higher, but really just trading higher with the market, up to about 53, 52.75 as we get the markets up 38 points. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks as we get ready for the opening bell. In under seven minutes from right now, you got Amazon up about $20. Let's check out Tesla. They're not a FANG stock, but man, they've been in trouble lately. Markets are positive, folks, and Tesla's negative by six bucks. Not what you want to see there. I mean, I, I guess I should have shorted Tesla because I spent a lot of time on my program Friday, which ran from 9 till 10 o'clock. And there's where 10 o'clock ended at 700. Um, talking about the distractions of Elon Musk and the market becoming wary of those actions justifiably. You're at 657. You're basically at the 50% retracement of the entire move. You make it to the 618. You're talking about 515 bucks. Maybe you make it back to the highs of August, which was 502. Maybe 500 is a round number. But nonetheless, be careful of that one, folks, because Elon's got a lot of other things on his plate right now. And I talked about it a while back. He is a visionary, man. And Tesla, the vision's there. The vision's done. That's a company that's that's operating on all cylinders. Now, yeah, he, he will stay intact with that company no matter what, I think. And it's all speculation, folks, okay? That's what I'm doing the show for, speculate on things to share my information with you. But it's no longer the visionary company that it once was. It is now a multinational car company, multinational energy company, uh, but it's pretty situated and it's not going anywhere. And Elon has bigger dreams than just running companies that are situated. Even SpaceX, I'll pull up the article. They just raised more money. I'm going to pull up that article uh, over the break. But I think they're raising something like $1.7 billion of cash. Maybe he's going to start doing more for SpaceX. Something to consider, man, because it's dicey what's going on right now. Um, and his attention seems very devoid of what's going on with Tesla. And they still got some pretty crazy multiples at 663 for that stock, folks. So be careful. All right, let's jump around to some of those other... Bank stocks, Microsoft shares opening up about three bucks. Microsoft almost makes it back to the 50 percent of the full run, folks. And this is why, you know, the S&Ps are at the 382. You got a great stock like Microsoft. Remember, Microsoft was one of the strongest earnings out there recently. Yeah, there's their last earnings. April 26th, crushed it on numbers, traded up to 290 before trading back to 255 with the market. 
But if Microsoft can pull back to a 50% retracement, folks, anything can pull back to a 50% retracement. Um, we get some retail companies with earnings. We'll go over that as well. We jump over to Google. Up about eight bucks. You talk about pullbacks, man. These start, these charts are just wild. And we'll pull up Apple, the big dog. So much for ringing the bell at three trillion dollars, man. One eighty-two and change. You hit one eighty-two ninety-four. Credit to whoever said I'm selling with Apple at three trillion bucks because you're now trading at one thirty-seven and Apple on a three-year weekly, right at that three eighty-two. And that's an area that's kind of been an area of support, or at least chopping around between the 382 and the 50% for the better part of like, what is that, from August of 2020 until almost July of 2021, you were in that area that Apple's now challenging. All right, folks, we got three minutes until the opening bell. We got markets sitting right where we were on, fr where we were on Friday pre-market. I imagine it'll be an interesting open to say the least. Come on back, folks, we'll be back in three minutes. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got the S&P opening with a little bit of negative action right coming into that opening bell. We're positive by 31 points. The Nasdaq really gave it up there pretty quickly uh, coming into the opening bell as we're at 11,876. We just dropped about 45 points. Dow still up 300. You got the Russell up about 15. Gold contract up about 12 bucks this morning. Crude holding steady at about 110. We had been as high just before I came on the air. 
That's a five-minute bar we're looking at at 850 this morning. You're about a buck fifty higher in crude volatility to say the least. All right, we do have a bunch of earnings this week. We got a bunch of retail earnings, Nordstrom, Best Buy, Ralph Lauren, but we get Zoom tonight after the bell. Zoom down about 1% to kick off the day as they come into their earnings tonight after the bell. You jump over to the Analyze tab. There's a move for you, folks. 20% is what's priced into this equity on their earnings tonight. Uh, if you're an options trader, even if you're not, if you're holding Zoom, you better be prepared for some volatility after the bell because the option market right now is pricing in a $20 move in either direction. It's probably right for the moves that we get in Zoom. I mean, just on Friday, you had $8 of movement. Did not get the claw back in terms of clawing back all the losses that it had from the intraday. Uh, Zoom, just been... Talk about a nightmare scenario, man. You are right back to where you were trading in February, February 3rd, to be exact, of 2020, let alone you go back. I think you're, yeah. You're back to where you were in 2019 on Zoom shares shortly after they went public. Not what a lot of people thought, for sure. All right, what else do we have? We get uh, Best Buy. Talk about a pullback in Best Buy. We accelerate through the 618. We're sitting at 71.26. Market's are pulling back, man. NASDAQ 100 is only positive by 20 right now. s and is a positive by 26. The companies that I'm looking at that are coming out with their earnings this week are trading lower. Uh, there's your action on Best Buy. You jump over to the Analyze tab, and they get some volatility, too. It would make sense being in retail. 15% move priced into their earnings. Their earnings are on Tuesday, okay? Yeah, Nordstrom, JWN. How about a 20% move priced in? $21, you're priced in a $4 move. There was the acceleration on Nordstrom. On Friday, you see it selling off with some of the retail earnings last week. You take a look at the longer term time frame. I mean, a lot of these equities, man, you're just dangling near some pretty dicey areas. Okay, on Wednesday, jumping through, we get NVIDIA. This should be an interesting one. Let's take that off there. NVIDIA, almost back to where we were trading at in April of 2021. You were at a price level for NVIDIA in August of 2020 of 147. They are out with their numbers on Wednesday. The market is pricing at about a 10% move in either directions, either, either direction for NVIDIA. We also get Dick Sporting Goods, 7805. They've had quite a bullback from 147. Let's just see where we are on a Fibonacci level from the bottom of 13 bucks. So you're just coming through that 50%. Man, it looks like the 618 might be where you get tested. You come into the high of 2020, which would be at about $65. You jump over to the Analyze tab. They got about a $10 move. Some big moves priced into these equities, rightfully so. But you're talking about 10, 15, 20% priced in coming out on their earnings. An extreme period of uncertainty, folks. And then Thursday, we get a ton, man. We get Costco out with their numbers. Now, let's see where Costco is on their Fibonacci retracement of the full run higher during COVID. Yeah, just sitting around that 618, man. You're at $420 for Costco. You jump over to the Analyze tab. Their numbers on Thursday, about a 9% move, which is a huge move for a company like Costco. Macy's is out with their numbers on Thursday. Talking about a $3 move for an $18 stock. They pulled back pretty harshly over the last couple weeks. You're at 18 bucks. You're almost back to the lows we had last year after trading at about five bucks during the depths of COVID. Uh, what else we get? We get Autodesk, we get Gap. Let's see, Gap, the GPS. Boy, man, these equities. Yeah, we do, we get Gap on Thursday. It's a huge move for a $10 stock, $1.20 priced in. Uh, we got VMware, that's interesting, on Thursday as well, after Broadcom going after them. We got Alta Beauty. Let's check out Alta Beauty. Thursday's going to be a big one, man. Lots of companies. Alta's held up pretty well. You're down about four tenths percent right now. We jump over to the Analyze tab. You got about a 10 to 11 percent move priced into their earnings. Uh, we get American Eagle. We get Jack in the Box. You get Workday. Medtronic Burlington stores as well on Thursday uh, and Friday. We get big lots and we also get Canopy Growth. Talk about a stock getting pummeled, man. Canopy Growth, $5 stock and they're pricing in a $1.25 move on their earnings. And uh, 
it's tough to find a buy on this stock when you just go straight down over the period of a year and a half from 56 bucks to five dollars and 37 cents if you want exposure to canopy one way you could do it is constellation brands uh, up about nine tenths percent. Look at this holding up pretty well. Constellation. You look at this consolidation, right? I'm going to extend this box a little bit further to the right as it just kind of keeps chopping around. Maybe you can make the case now that it's a little bit higher than that box, but you're in a consolidation area. The bottom part of that consolidation in, in constellations at about 212. You're sitting at 236, but they do have exposure to cannabis uh, while having the stability of their spirits and beer lineup. I think they have, I know they have Corona. I think they have Modelo, Kim Crawford Mines, one of the biggest uh, alcohol distributors out there because, boy, Canopy. At some point, folks, those Canopy stocks are going to gain some value. But obviously, there's still problems in that market with the way that they are reacting, to say the least, right? All right. Now, we also get Wednesday the FOMC minutes, which will be interesting. So 2 o'clock Eastern time on Wednesday, we get the Fed minutes. Um, we also, prior to that, we get some Fed speak as at 12.15 on Wednesday, Fed Vice Chair Leo Brannard, she'll be speaking as well. Um, you get Jerome Powell speaking on Tuesday at about 12.20 for the National Center of American Indian Enterprise Development Summit. It's always a possibility things get said when we get so much going on, folks. Uh, and today at noon, we get Atlanta Fed President Raphael Bostic and at 7 o'clock tonight, Kansas City Fed President Esther George. So lots of lots of week ahead in terms of what we have coming up. Okay, let's jump around to some of the other articles I had pulled up here. What I wanted to talk about. Uh, yes, Tether. Back to crypto. Tether withdrawals top ten billion dollars as regulators raise alarm about stable coins. Folks, you want to trade crypto? That's great. You want to trade crypto, and you think there's something stable about anything that you touch in that area? I don't think you're being real with the risk that you're taking. Tether has seen its circulating supply plunge from a record $84 billion on May 11th to around $73 billion as of Monday. Recall that the Luna mess was $60 billion. No reason why Tether can't go it as well. Regulators have raised concerns about stable coins. The panic over UST, that's Luna, uh, or at least the sister coin to Luna, had drawn attention to other stable coins, Tether in particular. Tether has seen its circulating supply plunge to $73 billion. It's meant to be pegged to the U.S. dollar, temporarily dipped as low as $0.95 cents on May 12th, after another type of stable coin, UST, plunged well below a dollar. That resulted in the UST's Luna token selling off, as we all know from now. Um, Tesla dominates the $160 billion stable coin market. But look at how big this market is for $160 billion. And there's nothing to say, folks, that, that there's anything stable about it at all. Yeah, unlike Tether, UST wasn't backed by fiat currency. But when you're messing with crypto, man, anything's possible. I mean, even Coinbase, right? Who would have thought that if you have money in Coinbase and they go bankrupt, they just take your account? Be careful in crypto, man. We'll talk a little bit about that. We'll take a look at Coinbase when we get back as well. Stay tuned. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps posited by 27 points right now, jumping back to a 15-minute action. We just dove down to a price level of 39.13, and just like that, we're back up 16 points. You were only posited by about 14 points. You got down to 39.13. That was a 27-point sell-off just from 9.15 this morning. Lows at about 4.45. You're talking about 39.11. All right, jumping back to crypto. So Coinbase down another 8 tenths percent today. Before we finish the conversation talking about Tether, the important part here so they got $10 billion of withdrawals from $83 billion down to $73 billion. Now, unlike Tether, okay, the UST debacle that was with Luna wasn't backed by any fiat currency held in any reserve. Instead, it relied on some, basically just, it relied on the value of Luna. And when Luna tanked, UST tanked. Now, he, here's the important part of, of Tether, folks. Regulators and economists have long questioned whether Tesla has enough assets and reserves to justify its stablecoin's pur purported peg to the dollar. The company previously claimed Tether was backed one-to-one -one by dollars in a bank account. It's a brilliant business plan if you can spin the lies. Because uh, if it's backed one by one with dollars in a bank account, then as long as that money is like FDIC insured, it's pretty reliable but subsequently revealed it was using other assets, including commercial paper, short-term corporate debt, and even digital tokens. Was Luna one of those digital tokens? As collateral after a settlement with the New York Attorney General. So keeping in mind, <clears throat> they only revealed this because they had to settle with the New York Attorney General. Last week, Tether said it reduced the amount of commercial paper it owns and increased its holdings in US Treasury bills. For the first time, the British Virgin Islands-based firm said it also holds some foreign government debt. What kind of foreign government debt? Tesla declined to comment further on the source of its funds, but said it is pursuing more thorough audit of its reserves. If that's not like the scariest phrasing of how your money is backed, folks, then I don't know what to tell you. Um, would not be putting my money into that. You can put it in there as a play, but there is a substantial risk of putting your money in tether and there's no reward that's the tough part here right this thing's never going to be trading above a dollar because it's pegged to a dollar but it can definitely trade under it you're taking a substantial level of risk for no reward now you could say the reward is you don't have to move it off crypto right you don't have to put it into dollars that is your reward that you're taking the risk for but you better be aware of the risks you're taking because not everyone is aware of the risks they're taking overall. I mean, Coinbase, in their most recent quarterly filing, said 
that in the event of bankruptcy, the client account funds may become general creditors. Not a lot of people thought that was the case, folks, okay? But that is the case. You're messing with a completely different area. Coinbase is not like having a TD Ameritrade brokerage account where your money is segregated. Obviously not. They've told you so. And I'm surprised the stock hasn't tanked even further on them putting that out there. It's a remarkable statement. And when you consider where crypto is right now, there is a severe chance that this thing goes BK, man. Because look at where Coinbase is, okay? No matter what they tell you, just look at the chart. Coinbase is at 65 bucks, okay? The last time Bitcoin was down at 30,000, Coinbase was nowhere near. Okay, look at The last time Bitcoin was at 30,000 was in June of 2021. In June of 2021, Coinbase was worth four times what the company is worth right now. Uh, that just might bode not so well for Bitcoin sitting at 30,000 as well, because no one's trading crypto anymore. Not sure that ends well on Coinbase especially. Yes, crypto's around, all right? There are gonna be some amazing things that cryptocurrency and NFTs do for our society. But there's nothing stopping Bitcoin from going back to 10,000, man. You're telling me Zoom can't trade from 588 down to 89, but the only thing that can happen in Bitcoin is get cut in half? I think at some point Bitcoin might come back to 10,000. The more I look at it, the more I look at Coinbase, the more I see the stories coming out, the more I see people taking money out of stable coins, you know, UST and Luna collapsing, $60 billion gone. Um, and then you look at Coinbase that's, flirting with insolvency and telling people that they're going to take their client funds if they go BK. And meanwhile, you got Bitcoin holding on for dear life at 30,000. How are they holding on for dear life at 30,000 if no one's trading crypto on Coinbase anymore? We'll see. All right, let's see where some of the FANG stocks open up today. We got Amazon up about eight tenths percent. We got Microsoft shares right now catching a little bit of a bid up 1.6%. Apple really catching a bid, man. You're up 2.2% for Apple shares. Google shares up a percent as well. Let's see how Elon's doing. Tesla basically flat. And I will pull up that SpaceX article after the break because uh, they're raising money at SpaceX. They raised like $1.7 billion. And I think that company now valued at more than $100 billion. Quite the company uh, for Elon. Uh, do I? Shame on me. All right, hold on. Who do we got on the line? Jose in Lakeland. Jose, good morning, man. Welcome. Greetings, greetings, and yet more statutory greetings. Top of the morning. Top of the morning, man. Happy Monday. What are we looking at today? Hey, uh, I just wanted to ask you a question. Um, maybe you can agree with me so I don't feel like I'm living in a Seinfeld world. Donald Trump's reign of terror was four years where he browbeat Reich Marshal Jerome Powell, the Fed chairman. Now, he threatened him with his job if he didn't keep interest rates at a, uh, near zero for four years. Uh, shouldn't we be blaming Donald Trump for the uh, inflation we're looking at right now? Because um, I don't know how you can see it any other way. That's a million dollar, billion dollar question, man. Uh, well, first of all, I think, you know, you got to keep things separate. It's, it's, it's tough, though, man. Every president has their, their, their wants and needs of, of what they want the Fed to do. Uh, but the supply chain deal is real right now, man. I would love to just blame it on Trump. You know, I would. But the supply chain deal is real. And that's what has me a little bit worried that as the Fed starts hiking here, um, that it's not going to have the extreme impact that, that they may want immediately. Because if we're still having supply chain woes, um, I'm not so sure that those hikes are going to have the immediate impact that they're looking for. I hope so, man. You know, um, but well, it's a little worrisome. And there's definitely a tail risk, if not a bigger risk there. That the Fed hikes, and that's why, like, three months from right now, man, things are going to be so important. You know, it's like when we start getting yeah. the data two to three months from right now, and they've been hiking 50 basis points, and they're hiking 50 basis points, and the inflation numbers are being compared to some easier comps, right, from, from last year in August or September or something like that, I think, I think we're going to find out either way. Well, look, I know tomorrow the sun is going to uh, uh, rise in the east and set in the west. Where is it in the Constitution or something that Fed hikes automatically cure inflation? What if it doesn't yeah. happen? Uh, yeah, I, I, exactly. I don't see as a, as a, as a fait accompli. Look, you've got milliards. Lumber is stacking to the roof. OSB, pressure-treated wood, stacking to the roof. 
Things are definitely slowing down. Like OB1 says, they're slowing down. Yeah, and, and the, the hit on interest rates for housing, that's going to matter for sure, man, because those oh, payments, sure. they matter Absolutely. for sure. Um, There's no way around hey, that one, on, man. Hang on, hang on, because you're going to have a tech rally, you know, that feel-good rally before Memorial Day this week. Hang on. This volatility, man, it's what keeps people, you know, in the market. Two-way volatility. Meanwhile, the market now back almost in bear territory. Jose, man, thank you for the call as always. Call again. Thank have you. a great Monday, brother. Thank you. Sharpening your Thanks. skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. You got the markets holding up relatively well, at least for the first 25 minutes of trading. But man, the market hadn't fallen apart yet on Friday when I was doing the show. Always so interesting that I do the program till about 10 in the morning. So it's only 30 minutes in the trading day. And so often the trading day has gone completely crazy by the end, end of the day. Meanwhile, it seems so tame when I'm on the air. Excuse me, folks. Markets holding on to the gains up 36 points. NASDAQ 100 up 82. The Dow up 366. We got a question in the Tigers Den about MPW. Um, so from our man Jimmy saying there's a research analyst raising the warning flag on some unsustainable business model items and some related company transactions. This company, company, Medical Properties Trust, real estate investment trust. So this is interesting when you get into what they do. They invest in, own, and lease healthcare real estate. So 
they have a subsidiary, the company acquires and develops healthcare facilities and leases the facilities to healthcare operating companies. It also makes mortgage loans to healthcare operators collateralized by their real estate assets. In addition, they make loans to certain of its operators through its taxable REIT. Um, there's a lot going on there, so I don't know enough about the fundamentals of the company, but it seems like they're you know, they're, they're building the facilities, they're leasing the facilities, they're, they're then giving the loans for the s facilities. Uh, you check out the chart. Basically, all you got back to was where you were pre-COVID. So anything in real estate, why are they just back to where you got to pre-COVID, right? As in 2020, you're at $24.29. The beginning of this year, all they did was they got back to even on that price level of 24 bucks. Um, that's a little alarming in its own right, though, right? If you're in anything to do with real estate, man, why are you just trading back to your highs um, of 24 bucks? Since then, we're at about the 50% retracement. And we'll finish it off with that article about SpaceX, man. Elon's got a $127 billion company not named Tesla, folks. SpaceX losing, looking to raise $1.7 billion. This article just out over the weekend in new funding, boosting its valuation to $127 billion. Um, and they got a couple different issues that they're going after. Um, Starship and Starlink. So not out of the realm, folks, for Elon to just be a little bit more fascinated with maybe shipping humans to Mars and letting somebody else take care of the daily details with Tesla. It's possible. Keep it in mind. Thanks so much for starting your week with me, folks. Stay tuned. We got Basil Chapman. He's coming up live next. Have a great Monday, everybody.